Good afternoon, Nadita, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the Social Media Monday B Blog conference call. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. At speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you. Ms. Knizner, you may begin your conference. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for It's So Media Monday, blogging, make the most of your video content. My name is Suzanne Knizner. I'm with Project, I'm a Project Coordinator for Campaign Consultation, and I will be facilitating today's event. Um, before we get started with the content, um, I want to go over a few details. Um, number one, if you lose your connection um, or phone connection, please simply look back on or call back in as you did originally, and you'll automatically be re-entered into the event, and we'll just pick up where we left off. Um, please note that the lines are muted but uh, we'll be, we, you will receive instructions for um, answering questions or asking questions during the Q&A later on during the presentation. And finally, this event is being recorded and will be available on the Vista Campus Social Media Monday landing page, um, as well as all of the links will be, uh, that are presented in today's presentation will be available at the end, as well as throughout the chat. Uh, let's see, last bit. Now I'll turn it over to Michelle Bond, Project Manager, for Camping Consultation, who will introduce today's presenters. Hi, Suzanne. Um, welcome, and thank you all for joining us today for this session. We're really looking forward to it. And also with us today, um, we've got Elizabeth Matthews, who is the Vista Nye Outreach Specialist with the Corporation for National Service, as well as Del Ricks, our social media specialist here at Campaign Consultation. I'll um, hand it over now to Liz for a few remarks. Great, Michelle. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for taking time out during your busy day to join us for this webshop. Um, we really believe that these webshops are important to you all um, because they can help you understand these social media tools that are available um, to you and how you can help to uh, use them to accomplish the goals of your VAD. So whether you're promoting your organization or recruiting volunteers or fundraising, um, these are all good reasons to be using social media um, as a VISTA. And of course, it also provides you with a way to connect with other VISTAs and to share uh, best practices. And in terms of the role that video plays in your VISTA assignments, this can be used as a tool to promote your project. It's also a great way to get information out about your organization, and it's also a wonderful way to document your service year. So you'll be learning a lot today to help you blog, blog, or however we're pronouncing it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Liz. Um, and uh, again, thanks for joining us, those of you who've been with us um, in the past. Um, Social Media Mondays occur on a regular basis uh, every other month, and we introduce new topics, um, as Liz mentioned. And so um, the key is that we really try to make them as hands-on as possible. Um, we have experts in the field and wherever possible, and often, and today, we have um, experts who are uh, VISTAs themselves who are using these tools um, to do the work that they do every day. So um, we're really glad that you are able to join us. Um, we try to do these within about an hour or so. We've got a lot of great content today, so um, stick with us if you can if we do run a couple minutes over. Um, in that, I will turn it over to Danielle to get us started. Thanks so much, Michelle. So today we're going to be talking about vlogging for your vlog. Just what is it and how do you get started? What tools will you need to use it to get started with your vlogging? We're going to have two VISTA case studies for you to show you how VISTAs in the field are using it. We're going to go over some really great blogs that are going to show you how they're vlogging. We're going to get strategies for using video, some best practices and some tips. Um, we're going to talk about using video for community outreach and then how you can use video to build your organization's capacity. So as Michelle said, we have a lot to get through in this hour, and we definitely want to leave time for questions and answers. So you can provide them during the chat today, or at the end, we'll be taking questions and answers from you over the phone. But first, I hand it back to Michelle while we try to get a temperature in the room and see just whether or not you are vlogging, and then how you're using it if you are. 
Absolutely, Danielle. Um, we tried to just get a sense of where everyone is at who's joining us today. So in the bottom right-hand quadrant of your screen, you should see um, a place for those questions that are there um, on the slide. So if you just take a moment to do that, um, we'll gather those responses and share them momentarily so that we can make sure that we're hitting all the right notes in today's session. So just a little bit of an overview. What is vlogging? Um, a vlog or a video blog, as we've referenced, um, is a blog that contains video content. Uh, vlogging is becoming more and more popular, obviously, as equipment becomes cheaper, and su supporting software, and also um, hosting and aggregation sites. Um, they become more prevalent and so really enable us to have a lot more flexibility um, at an inexpensive cost. Um, obviously, both Yahoo and Google have video sections of their own. Um, many um, MP3 players, flip video cameras, those kinds of things are available for purchase. And so with these kinds of technology at our fingertips, they allow us to all become part of the content, um, not just consumers of it. And so unlike ma mainstream media, um, such as television or commercial websites, the vlogs are for the most part uh, created obviously to gain money, but really to get your message out. And this is really relevant to um, us as VISTAs and um, the organizations that we work with because the key is the message. Um, so a simple, authentic, sincere message in a way that's appropriate to either your organization or to the community that you are communicating with is really the way to go. And as we'll see in lots of examples today, um, that can be a pretty straightforward and easy thing to do. Thank you, Michelle. Let's talk about getting started. The very first thing you want to do is determine a theme, a reason for your video blog. Why are you doing it? Who are you trying to reach? And what story are you trying to tell? And I gather your tools. And so that could be a video capable camera, or it could be simply set to music. There are a lot of popular video camera brands out there the iTouch, the iTouch. Pod, the Flip Video, and Sony just released a brand new video camera as well. Um, and as I said, photos can be used also. And then you want to fund a host site. And there are many free web services, uh, YouTube, blip.tv, VO, and we'll go over some more later on in the web shop. And finally, you want to prepare, plan, and shoot. Getting started. You want to prepare, plan, and shoot. Decide who and where you will shoot and what the final product would be. You want to start shooting with the full edited product in mind and work your way backwards. And then you want to post, publish, and distribute. So you want to save your video or photos to your computer via video software. Uh, for PCs, that would be QuickTime. I'm sorry, for Macs, that would be QuickTime. And then for PCs, that would be Windows Mo Mo Ugh, Movie Maker. Say that three times fast. <laughs> Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> then you want to edit your video, and you may want to include titles, transitions, music for effect, or you can just do it on a one take and edit it that way. Um, we do recommend that you use a title at the top of your video. It helps a lot to identify what the video is and what's coming up and creates a great establishing shot. Then you're going to have to compress your video, and you do that through Movie Maker, iMovie, there's um, Avid Free DVD, Final Cut, all kinds of different services depending upon whether or not you're using a Mac or a PC. And you can Google those to find out what would be most appropriate for your particular computer. Then you're going to upload your video to your blog or publish it online to YouTube or one of the other sites, free websites that I mentioned before. Finally, you're going to share your blog via an RSS feed. There are several um, there's FeedBurner, Google Buzz, or even YouTube, and then you can also share it to your social media sites, and we're going to talk about that a little later on in the web shop as well. It looks like the poll's over, and Suzanne is going to gather some information for us and let us know where you guys are in your vlogging process. Well, it looks like roll your response responsible for sharing your organization's mission, first and foremost, closely followed by marketing and communications, and also building a community and recruiting volunteers in that order. Um, looks like the majority of you do not have a blog, and that gives us a lot to work with today, so we're excited you're here with us. And you are obviously using video in your blog if you don't have a blog. And 
last but not least, uh, the majority of you are um, using, hoping to use video content in website postings and in social networking. Great, Adam. We are very excited to have you here because this is new information for you, and yay, yay for us to be able to share it with you. So one of the first things that I wanted to do was go to this particular blog. Um, this is CNCS's Unite We Serve blog, and I'm going to share my desktop with you. So this is going to give me rights, or I can just, can I? This is um, an example, obviously, of a well-developed, well-produced um, blog. But even on this site, the greatest thing is just how easy it is to use video. So again, this is um, Corporation for National and Community Services United We Serve blog. And this was posted, um, reappeared on the White House blog on March 17th. And I just wanted to t play a little bit of this for you. And here we go. For over two years, Americans of all faith traditions have come together, put their shoulders to the wheel of history, and made this country what it is today. I know that as we go forward, it's going to take all of us, Christian and Jew, Hindu and Muslim, believer and non-believer, to meet the challenges of the 21st century. And who became committed to serving my community. I know that an act of service can unite people of all faith, or even no faith, around a purpose of helping those in need. In doing so, we can not only better our communities, but build bridges of understanding between ourselves and our neighbors. That's why through the White House Office of Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. We're launching the President's Interfaith Service Challenge for college campuses and the neighborhoods that surround them. It's a pretty good idea, and you can learn all about it at whitehouse.gov slash interfaith service. Challenging students, administrators, and citizens to work together on year-long service projects that strengthen their communities and unite people across religious and cultural lines. You might build houses together. Or organize community-wide clothing or food drives. Or dream up a new way to address an issue that affects your neighborhood. But one thing's clear. We not all believe the same things. And we have to. We can certainly agree that together we can make a difference. So one of the things that I wanted to point out here was how simple that message was. But also that when you're doing blogs, you can take one of two approaches. And one is that you can write less content and let your video do the talking for you. Or, as in the case with this particular block, you may want to write around the video. And a lot of the information that our president shared with us in that particular video is also here on the blog. So in case people didn't get it in the video, it's there for them. And also, we were talked about sharing. They have included a way for them to share on their social networking sites for Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, even on their mobile site. And as you may have noticed, he did a plug for the website during the video as well. And I wanted to share a few things about how Vistas can take a very simple message like this and use it for your own purposes. Just the idea that in this case, obviously, um, you know, our president is seated in a room, could be in the Oval Office, could be um, in another office, in the White House or even outside of that. There's a very simple, um, obvious flags in the backdrop, and you know it's basically a headshot um, that pans in and out a little bit throughout his message. And so it's really all about the words that he's saying. And so similarly, um, with to this, as you know, it, you might have an update that you want to share with um, your community, and so um, you know you might cite and and have. Um, the groups that you're working with in the background. Um, or you can be um, just a similar idea with with your hat there to be also sharing a message um, if it's an upcoming event or something like that. So really let your content dictate there. Um, and also, you know, for those of you who may not necessarily be using um, vlog to talk about activities related to your service project, but more to actually share 
your experience, um, say, with your friends and family who may not fully understand what your day-to-day -day is like, we'll, we'll show a couple of examples um, to that effect later on. But the key is, you know, it's really about the message, and it's about what is um, makes sense for the topic that you're discussing and also for those you're speaking with. Great. And one of the thing, things Michelle talked about was to let people know what you're doing in your service, your family and friends. And you can tell a simple story and promote your VISTA project, promote what you're doing, tell your story, also use it as an archive and a documentation of your year of service, many ways, and one of them, of course, is through a vlog. This is the AmeriCorps.gov NCCC vlog. One of the videos that I wanted to highlight and we really liked was this particular one, the blog teaser trailer. So I wanted you guys to take a look because in addition to using video, the primary, prim, primary focus of this particular video is um, the, the photos that they use. So this is AmeriCorps and double C's. Take a look. So one of the things I wanted to point out with that video is that music was the key. That's what pulled at your heartstrings. There, the um, and triple C. I said double C before. Sorry, and triple C used music for this video. Um, they're making people's dreams come true by building houses, and um, a good portion of this video were photos, and it just told a great story about the work that they're doing. And I think it's a great way to use video as part of the blog. And again, this is part of their blog, so I'm going to scoot up to the top. It's not all video, but video is embedded in there. And it's just a great example of how you can um, just take some photos and pull on people's heartstrings and get the emotion out of folks really easily. Would you agree, Michelle? I, I was on mute, nodding my head. <laughs> Neither. Effective. Um, okay, so. Maybe you don't have a blog to even vlog on. We thought of you. We really did. There is still a way for you to tell your AmeriCorps story. And so Stephanie Ross is one of our guests today, and she's on the line, and she's going to talk to us about how you can tell your story through video and photo, even if you don't have a vlog, though we are hoping we can encourage you to do one after this web shop. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ross. Thank you so much. Um, yes, this year, um, well, actually, the past couple years um, for AmeriCorps Week, right after AmeriCorps Week, we've um, we launched a video and photo contest. And this year, we decided to do it a little bit differently um, and make it a video and photo submission process. And it's going to be a year long project and it's revolved around capturing my AmeriCorps story, which is basically your AmeriCorps story. Um, and it's going to be a collective collection of 
of every AmeriCorps story told to video and photos, and each month we're going to have a different theme. Um, submissions are going to begin mid-April, and to learn more, and once um, submissions start, you can go to facebook.com forward slash AmeriCorps week, and when you're on the page, you can click the tab which tabs are now located underneath the profile photo on the left side, and it's going to and it's going to tell your AmeriCorps story. And there will be two buttons on there. One, you can submit a photo, and then you can sub- or you can submit a video. Um, and you don't have to be a Facebook member or um, a YouTube or Flickr or any member of any site. You just need to just the button and upload your, your photo. If it's a photo, um, we prefer JPEGs. Um, if it's a video, um, we prefer videos that are 60 seconds or less. And how this is going to work is basically each month um, we're going to be introducing a new theme um, and for, for one year. And the first theme, um, which is going to be getting April is going to be, it's going to serve in AmeriCorps because, and you fill in the blank, and um, be as creative as you can and expressive as you can, and our goal, um, it's not necessarily a contest, we just want to, it's a great way for you to tell um, your story about the good work they're doing and why you're doing it, and um, and, and if you do it every month, I mean, that's a great way to start your own blog. I mean, you can add these to your blog, encourage people to come over and share their story. Um, it's a good way to get started. So, again, this is going to begin in mid-April, and you just visit our, our Facebook page um, or the AmeriCorps Week Facebook page um, and then click the Tell Your AmeriCorps Story. And I think, um, I think that's, I've screwed it all, but um, we yeah, definitely that's- encourage to do it. Great, Stephanie. Um, so you're saying this starts mid-April, correct? Correct, yes. And if yes. they go to the page now, um, what will they mm-hmm. see? Is there anything they can do now, or should they wait until mid-April, or what would you like um, them to do? Well, you can go to the page. Um, it's just basically um, an introduction right now. Um, we will be um, po- definitely go to the America Week Facebook page and like it. Um, that way you can stay up to date. We're going to be sending out notifications notifications through um, our Facebook page once it's live. Um, I estimate it's going to be to the end of next week, um, early um, around the 15th. Or so so um, but now it's just a little teaser, kind of an introduction, um, basically what I just talked about. Uh, and then we'll, we'll push it, and then you'll have the submit button so that we can start collecting. We started here first folks. Well, we're, that's right, you we're, did. You we're did. the cutting edge of information. So go to that Facebook page and like it, and then you'll be able to get some up-to-date information on uh, your video sharing and your photo sharing. And it is a great way for you to get acclimated to um, using these tools and using this form of communication before you roll out your vlog. And so speaking of that, thank you so much, Ross. Speaking You're of welcome. that, we're going to go over to another one of our sites. This is our YouTube channel. Now, we've done a whole uh, Social Media Monday web shop on YouTube on how to upload videos, how to tell your story, um, the benefits of having a video uh, channel, and some of the challenges of having that channel. And uh, so we were hoping that you check that one out. For this particular purpose, however, we wanted to show you a couple of things. One of them is that when you do take your video, a while back we talked about at the beginning of the web shop, uh, sharing your video and hosting your video. And one of the things that we recommend that you do is go ahead and put it on an external website in addition to your blog. And YouTube is one of those channels where you can do that. And you can actually go ahead and upload it here first and then go back to your blog with the particular video player from YouTube. What you, Danielle? What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, let me show you. So to upload your video once you've compressed it to YouTube. And it's here in this section, my videos. Can everybody see that? Are we all on the same page? Okay, great. So once you click on videos, the that you upload it will be here. And you can see that these are um, videos that have been uploaded over, oh, the past couple of years, actually. And if you click on the hyperlink right here, which will appear once you've uploaded your video,
again, you come down, you'll see there are different ways to share this video. You can share it through Blogger, Blogger. how convenient if your blog is hosted on Blogger. Um, high five live spaces, Bebo, stumble upon. You can share it to you instantly from YouTube to your Facebook page. You can also send it to Google Buzz and you can tweet it. But for your vlogging purposes, you can actually embed it into your blog. So this media player that we're seeing right now would be embedded into your blog. And you can have different sizes for the player. And as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see what's happening, but as I click on different sizes for the player, the code is changing, and you can also customize your code. And it's really simple. You're just going to go back up here once you decide how big you want your player to be. Right, copy and paste it, dump it into your blog, and voila, the player will be there for you. Now, the thing we wanted to point out, since we are on our page, our Vista Volunteer Reporters Project. And so that's what we just showed you, some of the things that were uploaded. And Michelle, I'm going to hand this over to you. Great. Um, we're going to take a look at one here shortly. But um, just a couple minutes, um, I'd like to ask Liz if uh, you're there. Yep. Um, hey, Liz, um, so you're, you've are you been involved with the Vista Volunteer Reporter Project um, for the last year or so. Can you tell us a little bit about how it got started and what the purpose is behind it? Sure. So um, last year in 2010, as part of VISTA's 45th anniversary, we decided we wanted to collect stories in a variety of formats, so through photographs, written word, and then also through video. I'm lucky to have one of our uh, VISTA alums um, who wrote a proposal, actually, to flip video camera, and they ended up donating five cameras to uh, the corporation, to CNCS. So we were very excited about that. So we put out a request for um, VISTA volunteer reporters. And after selections were made, um, the reporters, including Mike, who you were seeing there, and William, who's up on the screen now, um, came up with an interview, introduction video and then also so supplemental videos about their service and a variety of topics after that. Um, so the, the reporters are responsible for editing and approving the content. Um, is, uh, I'm sorry, for, are responsible for editing it, and then the approved content is posted on this Vista's uh, YouTube channel that you've got on the screen right now. Great. And so you mentioned that there's a variety of topics that reporters have um, compiled in their videos. You know, what, what kind of story are you looking for, or I guess what makes a good video, um, particularly for um, this project? So we're looking for stories that demonstrate what VISTAs do on a daily basis, um, as well as to provide a record of their impact over time. And this impact could be on the VISTA personally, on themselves, um, on their project, um, perhaps the individuals that they're serving, or the community in that they're, that they're serving in. So overall, we really would like the videos to help promote VISTA because, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know what VISTA is or that it still exists. Um, so just some general promotion there and then showing the impact and the value of serving. So we'd like to keep a history of the experiences of our VISTA volunteers through video. That's a really good point. I mean, a lot of folks often don't fully understand what, you know, America or is much less, you know, um, the, the VISTA as well. So that's great. And are you still looking for other volunteer reporters to participate? As a matter of fact, I am. Um, I have two <laughs> cameras right now that need a home. Um, so this, this position of a volunteer reporter um, requires a strong interest um, and perhaps also a background in multimedia production, although that's not required, but really just a strong desire to create compelling stories, video. Um, we ask that the VISTA have permission from their supervisor and that ideally this is a complement to your VAT and not taking time away from your assignment. Um, and we also ask that the person be self-motivated and well-organized because while they're supporting their headquarters um, and through the other VISTA reporters, it's up to the reporter to meet deadlines and have a quality end product. Um, we are accepting applications now, and the winners will be announced during AmeriCorps Week, which is May 14th through the 21st. 
and we get back to the um, webinar, I will go ahead and post in the chat room um, the email address where folks can send me email in order to request an application if they're interested in being a reporter. Wonderful. Well, let's um, uh, do you take a look here yeah, on these we're reporters. Ready to take a look, and you know, for the vistas who are on the line, you guys have, are on the cutting edge of two new project. <laughs> so we hope that after this we have some more um, VISTA volunteer reporters for you, Liz, and some folks signing up for the um, AmeriCorps website week. So here we go with an introductory video. Hello, VISTA world. My name is William Dowd, and I am a Massachusetts campus contact AmeriCorps VISTA. I know it's a mouthful, but uh, I've sort of learned to, to get used to it when I say it. Uh, I'm really, really excited about producing these video blogs um, over the next three months and short documentaries about some of the work that VISTAs are doing um, in Massachusetts as well as my own work plan. Um, currently, I'm res I reside on the North Shore of Massachusetts in a city called uh, Lynn, uh, where I'm hosted by North Shore Community College. Uh, I, over the past 11 months, I have been developing a community service center and laying down the foundation for, for for one. So a lot of my work has been um, going out to the community and finding out what some of the needs are. Um, it is the third most impoverished city in the, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And um, it, it's been, it's been a, a pleasure serving um, in this role, and I'm excited to, to do it again next year. So what's about this video? Um, is it simplicity? And that you don't have to be um, a major producer to do your introductory video, but as you grow and as you experience more with your tools, with your camera, and with the video and uploading, you can get a little bit fancier. But I just wanted to let everybody know that you can make a very simple introductory video and it will tell the story. And so now, I'd like to introduce you all to Mike Ewing. Hi, Mike. Hey. And Mike, let us know where you are now. Sure. So I am currently serving here at um, CAN TV, which is Chicago Access Network Television, uh, which is a public access station here in Chicago. And what I'm doing is basically in a nutshell, I work with nonprofits to help them use online video and social media to kind of um, you know, connect with the people they're trying to reach in the community and provide services and also promote themselves. So. And this is your second year as a VISTA, correct? Exactly. Yeah, this is my second year, but I'm at a different place here for my second year, different okay. nonprofit. And um, one of the things that I loved about what you did, Mike, was you set up a wiki helping people with uh, their video best practices. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I'm trying to find a way to share with you because I know you're coming up next. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on. Um, here we go. All right, I'm passing the ball to you. Okay, great. Mike, you've got it. And if I you do. would share your desktop with us and just take us a tour Absolutely. of some of those best practices. Okay. So I, I put together this week as part of my project because in working with these nonprofits, I found you know it's really important to give them some support materials and things like that that they can access really easily. Um, so, so sort of the page here is just outlines a few best practices that apply to all videos, but in particular when you're thinking about these vlog type videos, you know, um, these best practices can really help you, you know, kind of guide you as you get started. Um, so these ones up top here, I mean, definitely a big thing. Um, one, most of the research says that when people watch online video, they you know, decide within the first 30 seconds if they're going to watch the whole thing. So, you know, you kind of need to jump right into it and kind of make your compelling case as soon as possible. Um, points here, you know, having it be some sort of high energy video, and what that really means is, you know, making sure that you have people in it that are being engaging and maybe offering some, you know, into offering some uh, tips or hints or things that can be really useful for people. Um, let me just kind of scroll down here. Um, the second point Promote your, promote your organization, and what that's really about is, the more I work with these groups, the more I find out that I mean, they're really a treasure trove of stories, and it can seem like a daunting thing to get started with video blogging at first, but really, if you think about you know how many knowledgeable staff members or how many 
people with really interesting stories that your organization probably touches every day realize that, that there's you know lots of stories that you can tap into as you sort sort of start doing this video blogging. Um, another thing that's important too is whenever you're doing these online videos to make sure that you're mention your sites, your website, and that you know the video isn't standing by itself, but it ultimately serves a purpose of you know dribble to your website, or your Facebook page, or your Twitter, or something like that. Um, ties into what we see here in this next section. You know, and gear viewers is really important, and you know it's exciting to hear that AmeriCorps is trying to ask for uh, people like us to submit our stories to them because, I mean, that's just a really great strategy to get people to solicit stories to you. So thinking as your organization, you can easily make the same appeal that AmeriCorps is now doing to us. Um, sort of last quick tip I'd like to make is um, I think a lot of people tend to focus on the content of your videos more than another really important aspect, which is making sure people can find them easily online. What that usually entails is, you know, making sure you have a good title, good description, and good tags for your videos. Because, you know, some people to just upload a video and not give it a proper title or anything like that what happens. No one can find your video online. You know, if you think of how a typical user sits down, you know, the people that you're trying to connect, they're going to sit down to Google most probably or a different search engine and type in a few search terms and. So they're going to find your video. So making sure you fill out those, you know, see them when you upload the video, the title, the description, and tags are basically keywords that sort of classify your content. Um, and the one other source that I found out about recently, but that I've heard really great things about here is um, YouTube's. They have their own keyword suggestion tool, and I'm trying, I mean, trying to think of keywords to use in your descriptions or your titles or your tags of your videos can be kind of a challenge for a lot of people. And the great thing about this is, since it's tied in with Google, you can just go here and, you know, maybe in a couple of few areas that your organization deals with, you know, maybe healthcare or something like that, and then it does the work for you and recommends the most popular search terms that people are actually looking for. Um, specifically looking for when they're looking for videos, because those can be different than what people are just searching for generally on Google. So those are the major things that I've learned uh, over the past few months as I've been working with these nonprofits. That's great. I just wanted to go up to one thing where you say, um, if you could up just a little. Absolutely. And um, where you talk about the call to action and that mm -hmm. you can use video to call to action for your project or your mission. Absolutely. Um, you mean sort of ways that you can do that, or? Yeah. Have you done that in any of your videos, or any of the pe people that you're working with with the vistas <laughs> that you're working with? Yeah. The the more immediate and easy a call to action is for people, it seems to be that that's the the, mo the they found the most success that way. And actually, one other thing to mention is, um, I mean to talk about YouTube so much, but YouTube has this great thing called the YouTube for nonprofits. And if you apply for that, you get some really great special features, including, you know, you can get, and this is probably covered in the YouTube uh, Social Media Monday workshop, but. It is. Yeah, exactly. So, but it's shell, and you can go there for more information, but, but all the action you can do there, you can actually have, have links basically on your videos that people can click that can send them to your pages. Um, and those, from what I've, from my research and the people I've talked to, they found, people have found a lot of success with that. Um, you know, other than making sure you're mentioning your website, because you know, thinking people are probably watching these on on their computer, um, to make sure that, you know you're encouraging them to take the next step and not just watch the video and just leave it there. You know, encourage them to share it. Say, hey, you know, feel free to sh share this on your Facebook or leave a comment below, or you know, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Sure. Um, Mike. So do I want to send it back to you or? All right. Taking it back. <laughs> <laughs> one, and also just, I think we mentioned, but um, Mike has also been one of our um, volunteer reporters on the on the project, so be sure to check out. Um, he's got a few videos up there on the Vista Outreach channel as well, and that's just um, YouTube slash Vista Outreach. 
and you can view all of the videos there posted by reporters as well as um, also archives of Social Media Monday and other um, videos that have been posted by this. Great. So we're going on to our second guest. How are you? Are you I'm there? thanks. Good. So go ahead and tell us your title, where you're serving, and what you're doing. Hi sure, everyone. Uh, my name is Ann Jonas, and I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator at the Participatory Culture Foundation. Uh, and we're a nonprofit that really works to build capacity of of our nonprofits, particularly um, around media and technology. Um, and the particular project that I work on is called Miro Community, and it's a platform that allows you to bring together videos from across the internet. Um, and it's pretty easiest way to build a, a website. So we work on managing that and doing outreach around it and helping people build video communities. And so one of the things I liked when we talked, um, Anne, was the fact that you really wanted to reach out to people and talk about content development and aggregating content. A lot of people have no idea what those two things are. Can you speak to that a little bit for us? So I think a lot of times when people talk about um, video blogging, you think primarily about creating the videos um, and putting them up and, and talking to other people. Um, but I think that another critical component of video blogging is developing a community. Um, a lot of times the most successful video blogs exist within an ecosystem of people who are creating other video blogs and, and developing a conversation. Um, so one of the things that Miro Community does is this thing called aggregation, um, which means bring together videos. Um, they can be all different sources, uh, and having them be all in one place so that you can create that community and have a centralized space that people can, that you can send people to. Um, just to give an example, if you are working within a particular community, let's say you're working on education, you might want to build a site where you have your video blog about the work that you're doing with your organization, and you might also have a video blog for other nonprofits working in the same arena in the same community. Um, and that allows you to kind of build that conversation instead of having it be more one way just pushing out into uh, for you to your viewers. That helps people get their marketing and communications message out as well. I think that for one thing, as I'm sure we've mentioned before, just go is a more visceral experience and allows you to really connect with what's going on in your work and in your community. And when you're interacting with other people uh, who are doing similar work or vlogging about similar things, then you're getting out the message about your organization and what you're doing, and you make them more interested in you by being more interested in them. Wonderful. So, um, I think that Danielle is going to pull up something for us in a second here, but um, I guess you know, you, you've touched on this a little bit with talking about um, the, the visceral experience of video. And I'm wondering what the advantages of having video um, connected to your website specifically. Okay, so for one thing, it helps with the face SEO, which I'm sure we're all familiar with, the search engine optimization. Um, one thing that I found really interesting is if you have a video, and a, a, particularly a series of videos, and you've been following those tips that Mike gave about having good keywords, having good descriptions, having good titles, then those videos end up quickly floating to the top of Google search results um, and other similar site search results about those topics. So it can just to use my example, if you're working on education in your particular community and you have a lot of videos that have the words education and the name of your community in your series, um, then when people are looking for education in your community, that's going to pop right to the top. Um, so I think that that's one thing to be aware of. Um, and I also think that it really is people, particularly if you're working with a variety of organizations and pulling them together, it really shows people that you're interested in the community, that you're not just interested in what you're doing, yourself, um, and that you're committed to, to developing um, those ongoing conversations. Uh, right now what we have on the screen, just to, to preface a little bit, is a video from uh, someone that we work with at Access Humble, which is a public access station. Um, and Sam Kaplan, who's a Vista there, created this video about their use of Miro Community. 
It's a great example, I think, of um, of their use and of the mirror community. I think it will tie everything together for folks once we see it. So let's go ahead and play a little bit of this. Hi, I'm Alston, and I'm an intern here at Access Humble. Hi, Sam Kaplan, and I'm an AmeriCorps volunteer here. And this is how we use Mural Community and why we like it. So for all, Access Humboldt has a unique relationship with the Internet Archive, archive.org, so that all of our shows that air on our channels automatically get uploaded there. And because archive.org produces an RSS feed, we just loaded that RSS feed into our Mural Community site, and now basically any show that airs on our channels automatically shows up on our Mural site, which we think is pretty cool. Another cool feature of Miro is the widget feature. We've been using this feature to sort of spread awareness about our site since it's relatively new. We've been asking other local websites and blogs to post a widget so that people can see the videos if they maybe missed it on the channel or for some reason can't watch it. And this is sort of, this has been really special because we recently saw a video of a local protest that aired on our channel and got lots of views on the Miro site and then people started producing their own YouTube videos about the issue. So we really saw a community dialogue developing and, you know, happening through the Miro site. We also use user feature, and we've been using that to feature um, the producers who produce shows. So we have a locally produced science fiction show, for example. We created a user for that show. It's called Bobby G. Space Monkey. So when you click on that user page, it shows you all of the episodes of that show, which I think is kind of nice as well. Another great thing about Miro is it integrates really well with other websites like social media sites that people are already using. So when you you know when you look at one of our videos on our on the Miro page, you see the video, and then right next there's a button to post it to Twitter or to Facebook. So this is a way that you know people can sort of share these videos really easily, and it you know by being sites that they're familiar with and sharing devices that they're already used to, it it, it helps them be more comfortable with the site. Yeah, we've been using. Uh, twitterfeed.com to automatically tweet every time a new video gets uploaded, um, and that's been good for us as well. Um, at the end of the day, it's really just about replicating the TV watching experience for our viewers, uh, because not all of them get cable, and all of the people who do, not all of them even watch our channels at all, so really it's about reproducing that experience on the Miro Community website. So some things we like about Miro, and we uh, look forward to seeing its changes and uh, new features in the future. Thank yeah, you. and if you have any questions for us, you can reach me at sam at accesshumble.net, and we'd be happy to talk to you guys more about how we're using the site. Girl, I'm going to give rights back over to Suzanne. And just I had a quick question for you. So the video that we saw, I see that that was hosted on the YouTube channel. Um, do I have to be a member of Miro to watch their Miro community, video community? So the way the Miro uh, community works, one of the advantages of it is that you don't have to associate with any particular website. Um, you can bring in videos from YouTube, which we've talked a lot about. You can also bring in videos from Blip TV or Vimeo.com or uh, Internet Archive, as Sam mentioned, um, and anyone can watch them on the web. And one thing that we wanted to do there is uh, not box people into only using one service. Um, in particular, YouTube has a lot of advantages, but it also is a really large community. Um, there are a lot of reasons why people might use other services as well. And we wanted to say that, that people don't need to be limited to one particular platform in order to be building this video community. Um, so in particular, let's say you have a volunteer who has a video blog on Vimeo. Um, and then your video blog is on YouTube. Um, Miro Community is a way that you can have both of those come together and automatically update on one centralized site. I like and one of the things we want to point out is on YouTube you're limited by um, how long the video can be. Or do we have those same limitations on some of the other sites? Do you know? Um, I think that Blip TV has a longer um, period. Vim doesn't have a particular lower length restriction. I think it's more about uh, size. They often have higher quality videos. Um, so that's another reason. It really is in what fits your needs. And I really encourage people to look at both the, the restrictions as far as what you can do and also what kind of community is there um, and who your audience is. If you're, let's say you're looking to find volunteers who are really great video makers. Well, those people not always, but often tend to hang out on Vimeo. So it, it's 
be worth looking at both what are your needs and who's your audience, who are you trying to reach out to, and where can you find the, those people. That's such great information. Thank you so much. Stick around, you guys, because we may have some questions for you during the Q&A section. We want to go on over to tips now. So as you're just getting started, um, I know this is a lot of information that we're sharing with you, and you may not be all that comfortable with editing right now, so do the one-take wonder thing. <laughs> do one take to avoid editing, and that also, quote, keeps it real, unquote, and very authentic, which Michelle spoke to a little bit earlier. And we talked a lot about length. Uh, capture the interest early on in your vlog, and keep it short to five minutes, and five minutes is on the long side, you guys. None of the videos that we saw today were over three minutes long. So the shorter the better, try to get your message, message in very quickly. Location, location. Look for a quiet spot with as much lighting as possible if you're indoors. And you also might want to think about going outdoors and using natural light if you can. Clothing, uh, this is the same that holds true for broadcast television, no tight patterns on shirts colors and simple patterns rather than wavy lines and checkers. And then relax into it. Your feed log with something easy that will relax you and will relax, relax the person that you're interviewing. You want to keep it simple. And you can build it as time goes on. As you get better at your, your uh, producing skills, as you get better at your taping skills and editing skills, you can get fancier and more fancier as you go on. So we'd like to now take your questions, and that can be questions from any of our guests today, uh, Elizabeth, uh, Stephanie Ross, Mike, or Anne, Michelle, or myself. Uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. Could you, could you give us instructions, please? Ladies, if you have a question on the phone line, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. We'll also just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. If anyone wants to submit their questions in the chat section, we will be tracking those, so please feel free to do so. And if you have a question, please press star 1. I would be curious for those of you on the phone, how you are planning on using your vlogs now that we've given you all this information. Do you want to start a vlog? Do you want to start off using Facebook first? What you felt about the mirror community? We want to make sure that we've given you what you wanted in this web shop. So if there's something that we haven't covered or you would like us to repeat, please let us know. You can either put it in chat or go ahead and ask us over the phone line. I have a question from the line of Laura Hall. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, question and comment. Um, I guess I'll put the comment. I'm planning on using this. Uh, I'm a third year VISTA, so uh, doing the book for next year, I want to highlight once a week a local agency or nonprofit in the area that's um, actively recruiting volunteers. And I would love to do a video um, within the last few months. Um, I turn to each location and kind of do a, a recap with the volunteer cleaner about their services so you can see right through the blog what that site and service looks like. Um, now, I want to be able to do this. Um, I don't know <laughs> if I'll actually be able to. I always tend to uh, put a lot on my plate and uh, hope that I can get it all done. Um, being a third year, that's the difficult part just kind of who's going to continue on with it if, if, um, if it gets too big. Um, but nonetheless, uh, um, I am looking at using more video with the blog because I think I've been having really good turnout rates um, through our stat tracker with our uh, blog through the university. So just kind of continuing with that. Um, my question is more towards all of these wonderful links and um, all of this to kind of review down the road as I'm getting a little bit further into the process. Um, that's going to get sent to us, right? Absolutely. All, <laughs> okay. all these useful links are going to be provided at the end of the presentation. And um, when the archive of this particular web shop is done, you'll be able to go to the VISTA campus and all right. Will be available to you in just a moment, and at the end as well, and in the chat, and you'll have the entire presentation, all the slides, and all the links will be available for you. Okay. I did have a question for you. Do you mm -hmm. have a blog set up already that you're going to feed the video to? You mean with as far as my future plans? Well, what you wanted to do right now for the next few months is there a blog that you're already going to feed the video to, or do yes. You there is. Yes. Okay. And the the blogs that the videos would actually um, be embedded into would mm -hmm. not actually start um, 
being released until uh, fall of 2011, actually when I would no longer even be um, in the So you're talking about sustainability and how do you keep this going. And one of the ways is one of those free hosting sites that we talked about. And we talked a lot about YouTube, but Ann also mentioned Blip TV and Vimeo and there are others. And um, it can start now on the most particular channels until you're ready to have them embedded in the blog, and it will just live on in infamy. Um, and you know, one of the things that you can do as you're doing your exit is come up with some strategies, and boy, wouldn't this be great for you as a, as a, part, as a parting gift for the next person who's coming to the door or whoever you're handing over this assignment to uh, with some tips, and you can use the tips that were right here in this mm -hmm. um, in this web shop on how they can continue on with the video uh, and how they can continue recording. Do you have a comment to Lori's question? Yeah, I just wanted to jump in and say both on the, the getting overwhelmed and on the sustainability side, I think often when we think about video blogging, even then when we think about blogging, um, we often sometimes think, oh, oh, I have to do this off. Um, and I've found that it can even be more effective sometimes to um, build the capacity in your community and, and request that other people guest blog or guest blog for you. Um, and, and particularly mm -hmm. when you're talking about videos, um, if you're concerned having the, the time to do it all yourself and you want to profile those other organizations, one thing to do would be to set out a, a framework for those organizations and say to them, hey, can you make a video framework and send it in to me? Um, and I think that can, can sometimes be scary, but I've actually found it works really well, and it can sometimes be the kick that people need to start video blogging themselves. Um, so I think that, that people can sometimes win all around with that strategy. Do you have any questions? And ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, please press star one. Um, while waiting on that, and you, you brought up a great point because you can, even in your blogging, whether it's video or not, it's great to ask somebody to help and to get a blog with you. It takes the pressure off. Yeah, it keeps it you know, interesting for your for your viewers and for other people who, you know, different voices who have a, share a similar message or a similar mission. Right, and the blogs don't have to be long. They can be a 30-second blog. They can be a one-minute blog. You don't have to chop off so much that you have to think today, oh, my gosh, they all have to be these big pre-produced blogs. Not, three minutes is a long time. So you start off with a 30-second or a one-minute um, straight cut, one-take video, put it up on the blog, wipe your hands of it, and walk away, and you still have great content and great information. Any other questions before we move on with the presentation? No, ma'am. For the question. All right. Thank you so much. All right. We do want to remind you, as always, that while you're out there um, using these social media spaces, just remember that um, the same rules that apply to you as a VISTA um, over into that space. So um, please refrain from, refrain from any political activity or lobbying via um, social media sites. And of course, to be um, tasteful and appropriate as you're representing VISTA, um, of course, we want you to stay safe and protect yourself and your organization. Um, and there are some tips for doing so, and this is um, information that we do include at the end as well. Just want to make sure while you're out there doing great stuff that um, you're taking care of yourself as well. And to learn more about using um, our Social Media Monday websites, you can go to our uh, archives for all of our web shops. And um, the video recording will be there. The slides are there for download in the PDF form for you. And, and all of the archives of everything that we've done, I'd uh, encourage you guys on the phone to go ahead and look at the YouTube one in particular, which would be a great one for you as you start vlogging. The link is right there for the Resource Center. We also want to keep the conversation going. So if something comes to you a little bit later on, you can go ahead into this link that's perfect there, go into the VISTA forum, ask a question. One of the experts will get back to you, and we'll make sure that we keep this going. We want to be here with you throughout your service, so don't think this is a one-time thing. We know that there's a lot of information to digest, and we're here for you, so please do ask the questions in the forum. Um, I'll remind folks, too, that um, you should see the evaluation there on the side, so feel free to fill that out while we are wrapping up. 
we do appreciate your feedback and really try to um, you know continue to um, integrate that as we develop these sessions. So we do appreciate that. Um, I want to remind you that we offer campus tours on a regular basis, um, and that information is available on the VISTA campus. Um, so if you're new to VISTA or maybe new to the campus, we will take you around, show you what's there, how it's organized, and how to find um, the particular tool that you're looking for to help you uh, throughout your service year. mentioned, we gave you a lot of links during the chat section, and they're all here for you. And there are hot links that will be available so that you can go to all of the sites that we presented during the web shop. And then we have our VISTA social media useful links, and this is where you'll find us online and information about the Hatch Act Michelle talked about, staying safe online, the VISTA campus course page, and so forth. And I want to, of course, thank you for joining us today. Um, if it was your first time, we really appreciate you checking it out, and if you've come back, that's fantastic. We hope that you will be with us again next time um, in June when we look at tools that are specifically for VISTAs um, in regard to social media. So we'll spend some time on the campus looking for, uh, looking at the tools that are specific to um, engage audiences online, and then we'll also explore a couple of other things. So uh, we hope that you join us. You join us, um, and you can information also via the chat and following this session. Again, thank you so much, and um, we encourage you to uh, continue the conversation online. Today's conference call, you may now disconnect.